Good afternoon, good morning. You all are absolutely amazing. I love you all so very much. And I just bless the Lord for you. I trust you have been having a wonderful week so far. And I want you to understand that he that is in you is far greater than he that is in the world. I want you to have this hope of expectation, knowing that this week, something amazing is going to happen to you. Yes, something amazing. <laughs> what you've been believing for is definitely going to come to pass. I just wanted to encourage you with that, just to help you to understand that, hey, there are more with you. Yeah, there are more with you. There are more with you. Focus on the more that is with you rather than those against you. That is the perspective of Christ. <laughs> and that's where Elijah stood. Can you see that? And when you begin to see it from that dimension, you begin to understand the goodness of the Lord. And, you know, the enemy, he tries to get you off where you're seated, but you have to remain focused on where you're seated. Can you see that dimension? <laughs> amen and amen. So today, I just wanted to speak on a, on a word um, which I believe the Lord... Uh, placed in my spirit today. And the reason why I believe this word came is because a lot of you, you're going into the place of your assignment, which means that, you know, we've been on this channel. You know, a lot of us, the Lord basically uh, helped us to understand that we've been chosen. From being chosen, we're made kings uh, 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 and priests according to in May, in the, in the month of May, that is. And then until recently, um he gave us what he gave us he, he appointed us let me put it that way yes we were appointed and for that reason we're going into the place of what our appointment can you see so we're up we've been appointed to go into the place of what our appointment so this is where you begin to understand that even david though he was made king he could not become king until Saul had died. So he was in the wilderness until Saul died. As soon as Saul died, the Bible tells us in the book of in the book of Second Samuel that what he was then made king. So you can see he was the king of Judah, but when Saul died, he was made the king of what Israel. So you can see hence why the Lord has been placing the majority of you. You've been in the wilderness. You've been speaking the word, and the motive and the reason for that is so that he can you can he can test and understand who you are he can test and understand who you are can you see that dimension so in the book of second thessalonians it helps us that we went through a battery of tests to make sure we were qualified so the test was not for god it was for you to understand because he already know who you can you see that he already knows who you are to god be the glory amen so it was the test was for you to know who you are in him and what you're capable of you see that dimension because majority of you you're so much more than what you have believed in yourself that is why the test had to happen so that you can understand who you are in him that you're powerful that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly that what people have called you in times past that was not who you were because they only knew you by the flesh but by the spirit that you are <laughs> you can do so much more amen and it is for that reason that i'm speaking um concerning entitlement and you know as we understand the def definition of entitlement it says that what having a right to something because you have to understand that a lot of people in this hour you know i have i have a right i have a right to do this i have the right to do that i have the right to do this can you see that dimension you know people will say i have the right to my body i can do whatever i want with my body you know even for the sake of what taking life away can you see that dimension and this really grieves the spirit this sense of entitlement you get to a place of work you lay your credentials at the table, you know, and you're, it's on the table. The boss is having a look at it and you, are in, you believe you are entitled to that job just because you have all the qualifications. Mercy. You know, you might look at that woman and because the Lord has said that is your husband, that is your wife, you now feel so entitled to that person. You better be careful <laughs> because you see, the Lord can, he gives and he takes away. Can you see that dimension? Because you have to understand that everything we've been given is by the mercy of God.
You know, we can come into a dimension that we are Christ, we are Christ, we can call things from heaven, where we are seated, we can manifest them upon creation, but we still have to understand the mercy of God through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. Jesus himself said, by myself, I can do nothing. So if Jesus had to make that claim, which is absolutely true to the word, that by himself, because he needed the spirit, which we saw manifest when he went into the water and came up and came upon him. And John the Baptist, can you see? He basically confirmed that word, that the one I see the spirit rest upon. So it was only by the spirit that Jesus could do what he needed to do. So though we are Christ, we still have to honor that wonderful Holy Ghost. We have to honor the magnificent Holy Ghost. We have to appreciate and love and give thanks to Holy Ghost. Do you know why? Because without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Do you see that? So that sense of entitlement is what the Lord is wanting us to what? Look into today. Because of this scripture. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, and it goes like this. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. So you can see why sometimes the Lord separates you from certain people. Not because you have done anything wrong, but because they are walking in some of these dimensions and it grieves the Lord. A bad company corrupts good character. That is the bad company. That is why he's saying what? Have nothing to do with such people. So there's some people, they have this sense of entitlement and the Lord has been calling their attention to it for quite a number of times. But some of them, they've refused to listen. Some of them, you know, the Lord is working on them concerning it. But as for you, this is the reason why the Lord sometimes separates you. And he's doing that work in you at the same time. So that you don't feel entitled to where you're going. Oh, I've been waiting for a car. The Lord is blessing people for cars, with cars, sorry. He's blessing people and you're believing because you have been waiting a long time, you are entitled to it. Some people can wait five years for a car and somebody prayed for a car yesterday and got it the following day. And you wonder why you had to wait for five years and they got it almost immediately. <laughs> and now you're feeling entitled. <laughs> But you have to understand there is a reason why God does what he does. Because for you, he might be training you to be content whether you're with or without. That person, maybe the Lord blessed them because there is still something to come ahead. Can you see? Because the times and the seasons is different from one another. So it might be my season to wait. It might be your season to what? To have the harvest. But I have to rejoice in the Lord for you because you know why? Because he's blessing you. I have to thank God for him at the same time because I know that the reason why he's giving you everything in this hour is because it is your season. So that sense of entitlement, like I am entitled to this. I am entitled to that. And you see why some people, you know, they can either get to a country and then, you know, uh, because they become citizens or they're citizens of that country, they believe they're entitled to this, entitled to that, entitled to this. No, the Bible says, where does my help come from? It comes from you, the maker of the heavens and the earth. So I might be in a nation. I have to understand the nation is not my source. The father is my source. So do you know why sometimes the Lord does not allow, even though you're a citizen? Because he's helping you to understand that I am your source, not the nation, not the people, because you're here as a kingdom and you're here to manifest the kingdom upon creation. Can I give you an example? Jesus needed to pay his tax. Did he have to go to work? No, he called it forth. He manifested the kingdom <laughs> to pay a lesser kingdom. Can you see that dimension? And this is why the Lord is helping majority of us to understand that these times that we're in, 
He says, people will be lovers of themselves. They will not be concerned about other people. They are not concerned. You know, have you ever been there where you prayed for somebody and they received their prayer and they went away and they never came back to say thank you? And they're doing all that they're, they're doing. You know, they received what they needed and then they walked away after receiving what they needed. And this is when you begin to understand that some people can be around you. They get what they want and then they walk away from you. <laughs> they're not concerned about you. They're only concerned about themselves. What they can get out of you. Lovers of themselves. Can you see? Lovers of money. Boastful, proud, abusive. I want to share this to the glory of God because I believe this might not be, you know, a particularly a, 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 a dimension in which you're walking in, but the foundation of it is absolutely the same because the Bible tells us that a house built on the sand can you see when the storm comes, what happens? It is washed away, uh, you know, and the house built on a rock when the storm comes, it was, <laughs> it stands. So I received an instruction because I believe I've shared my immigration journey on this channel a few times, helping us to understand that, hey, I came in legally, but overstayed. And for that reason, I've been here, you know, went to university, went to college and things like that. And it came a time when I had to put in an application. And I thought I was entitled <laughs> because of the law that was at work at that moment in time, you know, and I began to go to solicitors and lawyers and things like that, but none of it came to fruition. And why didn't it come into fruition? Because of that sense of entitlement. In the process of that, I went into detention. Yeah, I was detained twice. The first time I went in, you know, people said, run away. I said, no, I have to be obedient to authority. I don't want them coming to look for me. <laughs> so I went in, I was detained, but God brought me out, you know, and then again, I was detained. But to God be the glory, he brought me out the second time. But then it was now, and it was then I began to realize, hey, this thing is only by the mercy of God because I've seen people <laughs> that they went, they did it and they got it. And why is it like, Lord, why, why me? You know, you know, and I, you know, and that sense of entitlement was coming. But then the Lord had to help me to understand. He said, Hey, he said, if you go down to Egypt, can you see? If you go down to Egypt, woe to the person that goes down to Egypt for help. He says, you, the people who are helping you, they will fail. You who have been helped, you will fail yourself. It was in that moment I began to declare the mercy of God, declaring the mercy of God. And I believe there was somebody around me at that particular time who was basically, you know, I would just look at it as, as a form of bullying because the person already understood what the Lord had already spoken concerning it. And they basically prophesied to it at the same time. But because maybe the mo yeah, not because, because of the motives behind it, can you see? They began to push me to do something that they already know was not the will of God. Oh, go back home, go to back to your country and go and do it from there. I'm glad I didn't listen to them because I would have been abandoned and left, you know, <laughs> I would have been abandoned there because eventually they walked away. So you can begin to understand that sometimes all of these things is God protecting you because then I felt like I was entitled. But when, you know, the Lord changed the perspective, I began to give thanks instead. I became thankful because the instruction came. You need to start becoming, you need to start giving thanks. So before the test of that in itself happened, I was giving thanks consistently for almost about 11 months until that time came. And the Lord was able to help me, he was able to help me to stand firm and say, no, no, tell them no, tell them no, tell them no, because they're asking you to do what they want but when trouble comes they will not be there for you <laughs> and that is absolutely true can you see that dimension so because of the motives people will be lovers of themselves so it's a place where i was sharing be careful of what be careful of the desires because some people project their desires because of the motives behind it entitlement so i want us to look at this dimension right for, so I'm going to pick this from the book of Luke chapter 12 for us to understand what this really means. Because it was helping us to understand that, hey, you know, last days, lovers of themselves, you know, lovers of money, boastful, they'll be proud, you know, abusive, disobedient, you know, without self-control, unforgiven, and not basically considering other people. No, not at all. Only about themselves. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. And this is what he says. He says, hmm, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, 
tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable, the ground of a certain rich man yielded abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I will store up my surplus grain. All, and I will say to myself, you will have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Look at verse 19. I will say to myself, not considering those who are in lack, not considering those who might be needing what he has because he has abundance. But he says, I will store it up for myself. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. So look at what God calls the people who basically act in this manner, lovers of, of themselves. He said, you fool. He says, you're, this night, your life will be what? Demanded from you. Then who will get what you have what? Prepared for yourselves. Then he says, this is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. So you can see that dimension. We have to be in a posture of thanksgiving, posture of love, posture of what the dimensions of seeking first the kingdom of the of god and his righteousness then all other things will be added because in these last days people are going it will always be about themselves why did you get that job oh i did it by myself remember you know i did the work i got all the certification i put in the work now i have the job look at what i have done all by myself i can you see self-achievement Look at what I achieved by myself. Does this remind you of somebody in the Bible? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. When he was in Daniel chapter 4, he was warned, don't do this thing. And he did it. He walked on his balcony and he looked at the vast kingdom of Babylon. And he said, look at what I have acquired by myself. And what did God do? <laughs> he drove him into the bush with the mind of an animal. And can you see that? Some people, they look at their YouTube channel. Look at how much subscribers I have amassed for myself. Look at some people. They open their bank account. Look at the money I have amassed for myself. People look at them, you know, the dimension of their business. Look at how well I have done for myself. Can you see that dimension? That sense of entitlement? That uh, the right to have? Like uh, I have the right to have something and I went and did it by myself. And now, you know, that right, the right to the right to. All of this sometimes is a manifestation of what? Not being grateful. Can you see that? Not being grateful. I'm entitled. The sense of entitlement most of the time is perhaps because you are not grateful. What has the Lord done for you in the past 12 months? Not looking at what he hasn't done for you. Not looking at what things are going wrong because it can be so easy to look at what is wrong rather than seeing what is right. Elisha and his servant. Hey, they've come to arrest us. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Because when we begin to give thanks for the little things, can you see that dimension? We're on this, the dimension of complaining will begin to be dissolved. When you begin to give thanks, that shirt that you're putting on, have you thanked God for it? That shoe that you're putting on, have you thanked God for it? The trousers that you're putting on, the skirt, the very dimension of your laptop, your phone, have you thanked God for it? The fork in your house, the pot, the food on the stove, that bread in the freezer or in the fridge, have you thanked God for it? That water dripping from the tap, have you thanked God for it? The light bulb, have you thanked God for it? The carpet, have you thanked God for it? The floor, have you thanked God for it? The dog, the cat. Have you thanked God for it? Can you see that in itself? Because the more you thank God, Father, I'm going into this place. You get into the place that the Lord has sent you to. I thank you for the boss. I thank you for the stapler. I thank you for the desk. I thank you for the staff. I thank you for this chair. Oh Lord, I thank you for the color of this desk. I thank you for how this desk is standing. I thank you for the drawers. I thank you for all that is inside of this drawer. I thank you for the person who made this drawer. Can you see that dimension? Because even some of us, we buy things from the store. 
or from the mall. We take it home and then it's not good. We begin to complain. How can I, how can you sell this kind of thing? How can you, I demand to see your manager. I demand, look at that sense of entitlement because you paid for something. Because you helped your wife, you helped your husband. You now have a sense of entitlement. Who gave you that right of entitlement? Because you have to understand all things belong to God. So because we are Christ, we can't be feeling entitled. No, it's by the mercy of God. It's by his mercy. Jesus was walking by, right? And what? The ten lepers saw him. Have mercy on us, Jesus. He cleansed them and they went away. And one person came back and said, thank you, Jesus. And he said, you're what? You've been made whole. So there is wholeness in thanksgiving. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? There is wholeness in thanksgiving. Because the more you continue to thank God, can you see the lover of yourself? It basically is dissolved. The more you continue to thank God, being proud, prideful, that is dissolved. The more you continue to be thankful, can you see disobedience? Why you, why, you even to the Father, Lord, thank you for even being obedient to you. It's an honor to be obedient to you. It's an honor to walk in that obedience, Lord. My child is behaving this way. Can you see this child, Lord, is behaving rather than complain about that child? Can you find five things that that child has done right in their life and begin to thank God for those five things? Father, I thank you for when this boy washed his plate. I thank you for when that boy cleaned. I thank you for when this girl basically washed up. I thank you for her being in the house. I thank you for when she was staying in her room reading the word. When you begin to thank God for those little things, can you see the dimension of that entitlement begins what? Be dissolved. Be cast out from your presence. Can you see that dimension? I was just reading the 10 lepers. It says, now on his way to Jerusalem in Luke chapter 17, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee and was going into a village. 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, can you see? One of them, he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. It was a Samaritan. Jesus asked him, did I not cleanse 10 of you? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise except this foreigner? Then he said, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Coming to give thanks is faith. And that faith made him well. Faith in thanksgiving made him well. He came to give thanks because remember, Jesus had already healed them because they were going, they were cleansed. <laughs> but he came back to give thanks and he was made well. So a lot of you, you're going to get to, you know, for those in ministry, the Lord is going to begin to get you, probably to begin to build your own and to or to be in a place where, you know, leadership is being ordained and things like that and you're already there and things like that, you, you know, and he's not wanting you to have a sense of entitlement, but what? To be in a place of thanksgiving. Because you know why? People who feel entitled, they look at themselves. I have the rights to this. I have the rights to that. I have the rights to this. Can you see the pride that is going along with that? The disobedience that is coming along with that? Can you see those dimensions? And this is the what the Lord is trying to save the majority of us from. So you might be there and you're wondering, Lord, you know, I've been waiting on this thing. The Lord is saying, begin to thank me. Just because I gave it to you does not mean you're entitled to it. But I gave it to you because of my mercy. Have you seen that before in the Bible? Saul had a throne, but he messed up. David was chosen. Some might think he had the entitlement, he was entitled to the throne, but they had been taken of him. He had been given to David. That's why I was encouraging the majority of us. Because the Bible says that some of you, you will sow, you will reap where you did not sow. Can you see that dimension? Because a lot of people, where they are sowing, they are expecting, you know, I'm entitled to receive something back. And the Lord is like, really? <laughs> really? This is by my mercy. But because of that entitlement, and say, hey, I need you to humble yourself, but you're feeling entitled to it. I'm, you know, I'm behaving this way. I'm entitled to behave this way. Really? 
<laughs> that person treated me this way. I'm entitled to feel, hey, you might have a valid point, but it's not an entitlement. You're not entitled to feel that way. It's just a counsel. You can do whatever, you know, this is up to you and with the Lord Jesus. But I'm helping us to understand according to the word. We have to surrender that entitlement to the Lord. Yes, I'm entitled to have this. No, not at all. Lord, it's by your mercy. Do you see why I was sharing that testimony right in the beginning? How entitlement led into detention center. I thought I was entitled until the Lord began to show me the truth, saying this is not where I needed you to be. You came here because of the counsel of other people, but it was not my will for you. But I, it was until then I began to learn humility. And this is the dimension where Lord, the Lord is walking majority of you in, in humility. Because you might feel you are entitled to that money. You are entitled, you know, to receive it. Because you're open to the YouTube, you are now entitled that people must give. You Because you are basically at your place of work, you are entitled to speak to your boss anyhow. Because now you have been made a minister. You have been made a boss, an accountant. You have been made a supervisor. You have been made a CEO or a manager. You are now entitled to do whatever you think you want to do with the people. People. that is wrong no because the more you continue to thank god the more you begin to understand lord i am not entitled to all of these things it's only by your mercy because it says blessed are the merciful for they shall what also obtain mercy can you see that in itself for they shall obtain mercy so you can begin to see remember in acts chapter 12 when you read Acts chapter 12, let's go to, before I go to Acts chapter 12, let's look at it in this dimension, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 1. And it says here, I'm going to read from verse 18, and this is what it says. It says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. What did we say in the book of 2 Timothy? They have a form of godliness, but what? They, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Can you see? They have a form of godliness, but they what? They deny the power. And look at what Romans 1.18 says. It says what? It's against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of those world, God's invincible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So in verse 21, therefore God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts. For, okay, so he says in verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Why was their hearts darkened? Why did they become futile in their thinking? Because they did not glorify God nor gave thanks to him. So you can see, can you see that in himself? It says against all godlessness and wickedness, what did we speak about in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 1? Lovers of themselves, abusive, you know, disobedient to parents and all manner of things. He said because they knew God, but yet they did not glorify God, nor give thanks to him. And their thinking became futile and foolish hearts were darkened. So if you refuse to give thanks to God, if you're not glorifying him, glorifying him, it can lead to your heart being what? Being darkened and your thinking made futile. You're not appreciating the Lord for the little things that he has done for you, but you're feeling entitled to it. Because God has promised you, you feel you're entitled. Yes, he has promised you, but you still have to thank him. And not, ah, because God has said I'm entitled. No, you have to be thankful and honor him. Lord, I know this promise you are giving me is only by your mercy. Sometimes I feel like I don't deserve it. But I'm grateful because even some of the things I don't deserve, there are some things I deserve and he gives. There are some things I don't deserve and he gives them anyway. That was why I was talking about inheritance. Some people, if they misbehave and they're not doing the will of God, the Lord can take all their prayer points and give it to you. Why? Did you deserve those prayer points? You didn't even pray for it, but he gave it to you. That's why you hear the scripture. They reaped where they did not sow. <laughs> have you read that scripture before they reaped 
where they did not sow. This is for you to understand that some God gave some people what they did not deserve. Not at all. He gave it to them. <laughs> Can you see that in itself? So that's why. <laughs> that's why the Lord is helping you to understand in this hour. That entitlement, we need to do away with it and surrender it to God. We need to what? Do away with it and surrender it to God. So you can understand John chapter 4, 38. It says here, it says, I sent you to reap. Let's start from verse 37. For in this, in this case, the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and now you have taken up their labor. Can I share that in another version? It helps you to understand. It says, I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. Some people have done the work, but you are reaping where you did not sow. You are reaping the fruits where you have not sown. So you might go there and believe in, ah, I am entitled to this. And the Lord is like, really? Did you sow there? No, but you're reaping from there. That's the mercy of God. So all those people that always say, if you do not sow, you will not reap. That's not what the Bible says. That is very true to one dimension. But there is another dimension that says you will reap where you did not sow. And that dimension is by the mercy of God. I know I have all these qualifications for this job, but your mercy, Lord. I might not be entitled for it, but your mercy, Lord. At this position that you have given me, Lord Father, it's only by your mercy. Can you see that dimension? Father, thank you. I came to this country. I know I should not be here, but I'm here. And I'm thanking you for your mercy. Your mercy that you have shown for me to be able to receive all that you have for me. It's the mercy of God. This is when you begin to understand the glory of the Father. So when you begin to thank God in his mercy, can you see? When you begin to thank God for what he's doing in your life, then Romans 1, chapter, verse 21, it begins to help you to understand. Now you know him. You're glorifying him. You're giving thanks to him. Your thinking is no longer futile. Your heart is no longer foolish or darkened, but is illuminated with light. There is wholeness in thanking God. And for some of you, this is the dimension he's calling you to. Stop feeling entitled. Just because you got married, you are entitled to treat that woman or treat that man anyhow. No, just because God has basically revealed that is your partner, you are entitled to treat him anyhow. No, you're not. Just because God has given you what he said he will give you, you're entitled to treat it the way you want to. No, it's by the mercy of God through thanksgiving. Father, thank you for giving me this woman. Thank you for giving me this man. Thank you for giving me these children. Lord, by what this woman is doing or this man is doing, I might not deserve them, but I am very grateful that you saw that I was deserving for you to be able to give them to me. And I appreciate it. I thank you, Father. Help me to treat them right. Help me to walk with them right. Help me to treat my boss right. Help me to honor my boss the way you want him to be honored. Help me to honor my leader the way you want them to be honored. Help me to honor my children the way you want them to be honored. Help me to honor my parents the way you want them to be honored. Look for the little things that they've done right. Thank God for them. Not being like, ah, I have the right to tell you what to do. No, not at all. You don't have that right. God gives the permission and gives you the what? The very manifestation of the instruction and say, hey, I need you to speak to that person. I need you to speak to that person. Yes. That was what I was helping majority of you to understand. If you have a wife who is in the ministry and you're just a husband and the Lord has called you, you're the head of the house to God be the glory. But there is a realm of the spirit. When the wife does something wrong, you might not have the jurisdiction, the right to basically correct that person. The same thing with husbands. Because some wife, they will basically talk to their husband anyhow. They will basically speak however way because they believe because I'm married, they have the right to do so. You have to be careful. Romans 8.2, the law of the spirit. Christ is the head of the husband. The husband is the head of the wife. The same thing in your sanctuary. 
your pastor, your leader. You have to what? Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy, people will basically, I'm talking in the dimension of disobedience to parents, not just parents, to leaders, to, to government and things like that. Government is asking you to do something. You're saying, no, nope, you will not do it because I'm entitled to my body. I'm entitled to what goes in my body and what comes out. Look at that, entitled. Look at, I have the right to basically receive or not receive. And the Lord is saying, I need you to be obedient. You have the right to that body. That was what the man said in the book of Luke chapter 12. And he said, tonight, I will take it off you. So you understand that you don't have the rights to it. It's only by the mercy of God. You see that dimension? And everything I want us to understand flows from the foundation and the root of love. It is all about love. It is all about love. Love is the foundation of it all. And the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us in absolute love today. And help you to understand that sense of entitlement over your children, over your family, over all of this. Let it be a surrender to him. Father, I surrender all this entitlement to you. I know, you know, you give at your will. You've made that promise. I believe your word. But that sense of entitlement that I have the right to this. I have the right to this. I have the right to this. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. That sense of entitlement, just surrender it to the Lord and it will teach you how to walk the right way concerning it. Do you see that dimension? Because it wants to help each and every one of you, uh, every one of us. We don't want to go there with a sense of entitlement because the Lord sent me here. I'm entitled to speak to the people because the Lord sent me here. I'm entitled. No, not at all. You have to do it the Lord's way. Let the Lord teach you how to do it the right way, how to treat that child well. Can you see that? How to raise him the right way. Yes, you might be the parent of that child, but he wants you to what? Be able to do it the right way. There is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. Entitlement. I have the rights. There is a way that seems right to man. It says it seems right to you, that way that you think you're following. Entitlement, but it can lead to destruction. And it doesn't want you to go down that path. So you can see it. This is why he's bringing that in, in what? So that we can be able to walk. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And for that reason is why he wants to lead you down the right path. So you can see. So I just want to leave this with each and every one of us so that you can better understand it. Because, you know, it's a dimension where he wants to teach you this. Because these are the last perilous times that we're in. Where people will believe that they have the right to this. They have the right to that. They have the right to this. But he says they are only lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. They are proud. And have you met those people? You know, where they always tell you, at this, you know, you know, you're doing the things of the Lord. And they will say to you, let's face the reality. You know, when people say things like that, let's face reality. Your kingdom is your reality. Some people might not be where you are, you know, because they look at the things based on, you know, the perspective that is in front of them. But we are here in the perspective of Christ. That is why sometimes you do things and people don't understand you. And it's okay because they've not come up to your dimension yet. They might not know it now, but they will know it later. Jesus spoke that dimension again and again and again and again. Again and again, they picked up stones. Again and again, they basically tried to kill him. Again and again, they tried to chase him from town to town until they put him on the cross. But in Acts chapter 2, they finally understood it. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? That is why I said you walk in love with each and every one of them. So the Bible is telling you that there is a reason why he's separating you from some people at this point in time, because they have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. So it's a place where you are basically walking in a realm and they are saying, hey, you know, the reality is this. The reality is this, you know, and they try, they're trying to use the, the wisdom of man to make sense of the things of God. <laughs> Can you see that? And this goes again. With everything that is happening around you. I just want to release that in itself. 
you know, for us to be able to understand that dimension. Because this is what the Lord is helping each and every one of us to understand in this hour. To be thankful for everything that you're doing in this hour. The more you thank God, the less you're complaining. The more you thank God, you know, you're not being a lover of yourself. You're basically a lover of God. The more you thank God, because some people, they behave the way they are behaving because of probably things that is happening around them that you might not even be aware of. Can you see that dimension? So it's a place that we're not like, I have the right to this thing. I have the right to this ministry. I have the right to this business. I have the right to this. I have the right to that. Ah, oh, Let's surrender. Let's basically give that to the Lord, right? And just basically be thankful for one another. Being thankful for one another. Being thankful for what? For one another. Amen. So that's why I was sharing that testimony right from the very beginning. When I basically saw it from the perspective of God, I knew that I needed the mercy of God, not entitlement. Because according to the law, it says if you have been here for the X amount of years, you are now able to apply. Many people who are applying for it, they are not getting it. Why? Because they felt like it was an entitlement, but it still had conditions. And the condition, basically, if they did not meet the condition of that, they basically will be removed. So it was the mercy of God. Looking at it, it's the mercy of God, not entitlement. So if I had listened to people, I probably might not be here today. But I'm grateful because by thanksgiving and what? And giving God the glory and thanking him shielded from that in itself, helping me to understand with clarity, according to Romans 21. The heart, can you see Romans 121? It says the heart became full of light. It was no longer darkened. Because when I had and when I was thinking I had entitlement, it was darkened. You see that dimension? To God be the glory. And from that in itself, I want to speak about those who have what? Who have sworn falsely. And I'm speaking this from the dimension of uh Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 16. And he says, these are the things you are asked to do. Speak the truth to each other. Render true and sound judgment in your courts. Do not plot evil against one another and do not swear falsely. I hate all this, declares the Lord. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I remember somebody who was around me and in their family, anybody that speaks, I believe this is the condition of either the covenant or the ritual of the marine kingdom that was around them, that anybody who speaks falsely against that family, do you know what happens? They basically, they come against your voice. They try to attack your voice every single time. And, you know, to God be the glory, the Lord basically delivered from that in itself. And it was a place where, you know, and the Lord was helping to understand that this is the truth that I'm showing because this is the evil that they were plotting. Can you see that in itself? And the Lord had to deliver from that. And it's helping majority of you to understand that some of you at the same time, you know, you've sworn falsely to things. You've sworn falsely, you know, with people. You've sworn falsely, you know, maybe with police officers. They ask you a question and you basically like, nope, I didn't do it. Some of you, you got on the, you know, you, might, you you're probably placed in a jury, jury, the jury, jury assignment or whatever it is. And you are swearing falsely, even though you know the truth. Ah, no, I don't know. I swear to God, I don't know. And look at the false. <laughs> How many I swear to God have you said? And they were absolutely false because you were trying to get out of trouble. The Bible says, I hate all this, declares the Lord. Because in the book of Revelation chapter 22, can we, 22, Revelation 22 and verse 8, can we read that together so that we better understand what the Bible says concerning it? Because a lot of us, we might not understand the truth of the word. The Bible says, the one who overcomes will inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But to the cowardly and unbelieving, and abominable and murderous and sexual immorals, and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. So swearing falsely is like lying. And the Father is helping you to understand, hey, if you're lying, <laughs> can you see that? It says their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and so forth. So telling lies might not get you to heaven. Can you see that dimension? So a lot of you, you've sworn falsely 
about things you know not condemning anybody the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus and i'm speaking because there are some of you you know you've been in front of a judge you swore falsely you know you went to a marriage a ceremony and you know that marriage ceremony was not basically of god but you went there and they called you to come and participate in it and to come and you know stand there and and witness that marriage and you know that it was not you know <laughs> they were basically doing it for one reason or the other it was not because of love they were trying to they were trying to get entitlements to something can you see that dimension and the bible is saying this is the second death lake that burns with fire and sulfur all liars unbelieving abominable murderers sexual immorals sorcerers idolaters can you see that dimension so i just want to release the mercy of god because I know there was somebody around me, basically, they went for, you know, they went to this, uh, uh, two people getting married, you know, it wasn't, they, they, were, they were same sex getting married, but the, the reason for them getting married was not because they were, they were, you know, that, which is absolutely wrong, homosexual, you know, homosexuality, going to witness that in itself, and, you know, and they were swearing falsely because they knew the reason behind it. So you can see that in itself, you know, the Lord has forgiven the person. But it's helping the majority of us and some of us we've walked in this dimension and the Lord is wanting to show mercy. So if you've sworn falsely to things, falsely to people, falsely all of those things and things like that, I just want to bless you with the mercy of God. I've been there before and he showed me mercy and he said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So if you've sworn falsely when you knew the truth concerning something. And you went and you basically, you know, you lied about it. You swore falsely that, yeah, that, that person was speaking truth when you know that they were lying and things like that. <laughs> the Lord have mercy in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And for those, you know, who have walked in entitlement before, I also bless you with the mercy of God. Can you see that dimension? May the Lord continue to be with you. And I pray that from this moment on, you know, you're walking in the very context of how the Lord intends for you to walk in because you are the glory of God. He loves you so very much. We're not supposed to have that dimension of I'm entitled to this. No, the Lord is the one who gives. Where does your help come from? In the Bible, <laughs> you see everybody there who was walking in the will of the Father. It was by the mercy of God. It was by the mercy of God. It was by the mercy of God. So I want to bless you with that in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray this basically, you know, brings a dimension of the word to, you know, uh, to bring correction and to bring a, a, a dimension of awareness because a lot of you are going into your place of assignment. You've been appointed and you're going in. And the Lord wants you to go in with a clean and a pure heart, not going there with a sense of entitlement. Let him teach you how to walk right, be right, and to treat people right. Amen. I love you so very much in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Have a wonderful and a glorious time in the presence of the Most High that you are. I love you all. Stay blessed. Amen.